guys, my name's Nell. Today we'll be doing an all over body workout on the reformer for beginners. Today's workout is level one of a comprehensive 12 level full body reformer series. I'm really excited to share with you. Over these 12 videos, my workouts will progress from beginner level all the way through to advanced. I've been teaching these programs for 15 years and they successfully progress you through the Pilates repertoire. You'll find both modern and traditional exercises in these programs. You can actually download the printable program below. I really hope you enjoy. Now let's get started. Okay, so let's start with plies. Heels on the bar, sit bone width apart. Straighten the legs, bend the legs. Breathe out to straighten, breathe in to bend. We want to feel the back of the legs working. So think of pressing the thigh bones down towards the ground and initiating the movement from the sit bones through to the heels. Toes on the bar, balls the feet on the bar. Exactly the same thing. Sit bone width apart, breathing out through the mouth, breathing in through the nose. Feel like you're lengthening out of the hips and returning with control. Once again, working the front and the back of the thighs by thinking of imprinting the thighs down. Then V position. So you want the knees about ASIS, hip bone width apart. Breathing out to straighten, squeeze the heels together. Breathing in, keep those muscles contracted as you return the bed to the stopper. So keep squeezing the heels together as you lower down. Keep lengthening out of the hips. Now heels out wide, breathing out to straighten the legs. Try and adduct the legs together. So as you straighten the legs, yes, we're working the thighs and the back of the legs, but you also want to use the inside thighs. So think about actually drawing the heels in towards one another as you push out and as you return back to the stopper. Keep lengthening through the spine, out through the crown of the head, and then balls of the feet or toes on the bar. Now I'm Ideally, you want to keep the heels nice and still. I'm not actually doing that so well in this series, but ideally we want to keep the heels as stabilized and as still as possible. Breathing out, adduct the legs. Breathing in, adduct the legs. Now into rises. So once again, feet sit bone width apart. Straighten the legs and then lower and lift the heels. I'll often lift my head up and maybe support my head with my hands so that I can have a look at the alignment of my feet. Often you'll find that people roll onto the outside of the feet. We want to keep pressing into the big toe joints to keep the heels sort of tucked and hidden behind the ankles. Then into prances. So lift all the way up and then lower all the way down as best you can. Engage the thighs by sucking the kneecaps up and get that lift up through the core, through the palate, through the crown of the head, all the way from the big toe joints right up through to the crown of the head. Okay, so now what we're going to do, put the headrest down, have the heels sit bone width apart, tuck the tail under, roll all the way up. Breathe in at the top and then breathing out to roll back down through the spine. Spine curls. So tuck the tail under, roll all the way up, keeping the bed in at the stopper by squeezing the back of the knees. So imagine you've got a ruler behind the back of the knees. As you tuck and lengthen the tailbone out, squeeze the back of the knees so you activate the hamstrings right up to the sit bones. And then as you roll down, try and lengthen the bony protrusions of the spine away from one another. Definitely engage the lats by pressing the palms down into the carriage and the back of the arms down into the carriage. Trying to open up the spine as best you can, open up the front of the hips as best you can. I like to use a tennis ball in between the knees here too. I haven't done that in this workout but it's a really great tool to keep those adductors engaged and imagine you're stretching the kneecaps up and away from you where the ceiling and the wall meets reaching the knees towards where the ceiling and the wall meets on the way down as well that can help with lengthening through your body okay so now into curl ups put your hands behind your head have your knees and feet together lift your shoulders off and then flex up from that point and then return to that point. 
So you're exhaling neutral pelvis. Inhale, keep the abs engaged as you lower back down to the start position, which is the shoulder blades off the carriage. So you're really pivoting around where the lower shoulder blades are. Imagine a skewer going through the mid spine. And same with obliques, you're wanting to sort of pivot around that lower shoulder blade part of the spine, lengthening, lifting both shoulders off, but one more than the other. Keep the armpits drawing towards the knees. Okay, now into toe taps. Lift one leg up, followed by the other. Neutral pelvis, scapula imprinted. And then hinge in the hips, moving the thigh away from your torso, touching the calf to the bar. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Maintaining a little hollow in the lower back without the tense. In, in your back, you wanna feel the tension scooping in and up in the front of the belly. And then into hip rolls, so grab hold of the rods just above the shoulder rests, inhale roll and then exhale return. Inhale roll over onto one hip and then exhale return. Imprint the opposite shoulder blade down as you lift the hip up and then initiate, think rib, waist, hip to return. Press the right shoulder blade down and then think rib, waist, hip to return. The legs move as one unit, so every now and again I'll have a look at the kneecaps and make sure that they're even. Often the top leg will slide back down, so you want to keep those kneecaps even. And our target area is the waist muscles, the obliques. Beautiful mobility for the spine as well. Inhale, roll, and then exhale, return. Inhale through the nose, and then initiate deep abdominals to return. Okay, so put the headrest up, roll onto your side. We're going to change the springs. We had three, uh, two and a half springs for uh, plies. Now we're going down to two springs. If that feels too strong, then just do one and a half springs. Lift your head up and have a look at your pelvis. Make sure you're straight, so pubic bone, navel and nose in all in one line. Right heel is in line with the sit bone. Breathe out to straighten, breathing in to return. Place your left hand on your ribs and your right hand on your lower abdominals. Feel the lower abdominals drawing in and up and feel the rib cage closing in and down. Swapping sides, swapping hands. Start with the bed just a millimetre or two away from the stopper so you feel your muscles activate and then keep that contraction as you push out and in. Putting your hand around the back of the thigh, making sure that's contracted is a really awesome way of making sure that that active leg is working for you. So that left hand string. Now right ball of the foot on the bar. Once again, a little bit away from the stopper to start and then pressing out with the back of the leg. Thigh bone presses down, thigh muscle scoops up. Lower abdominals are drawing in and up, ribs are down, neck is soft. And ideally try and keep that ankle as stable as possible. Other side, initiate activating the back of the leg, lengthening out of your ankle. Feel the lower abdominals scooping up as the foot presses away from you and the leg presses down. So now into semicircle prep, put the headrest down, feet in a V position, toes apart, heels together, knees in line with the ASISs. Tuck the tail under, roll all the way up, keeping the heels together. Push the carriage out three quarters of the way. Keep the carriage still as you roll through the spine back to neutral and then return the bed to the stopper. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, squeeze the heels together, reaching the knees away from you. Pushing out with the back of the legs. Rolling down, stabilizing the carriage with the hamstrings. Return to neutral and then back into the stopper. Again, squeeze the heels together. Keep the knees sit bone with uh, ASIS hip bone width apart. 
Unhunch the shoulders as you roll through the spine. And then we reverse it. So you press out, tuck your tail under, lift the hips all the way up, keeping the bed as still as possible. Return back to the stopper, keep the bed in at the stopper as you roll back down through the spine. Now if the carriage is moving away as you're rolling up and down, just put on a little bit of a, light, a heavier spring. So maybe a light spring like a quarter or a half spring. And that'll help you keep the bed in at the stopper whilst you build up your strength and mobility. As you draw the bed in, reach the knees away up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Keep the hamstrings and the inside thighs active. So put the headrest back up, roll onto your side. We're going to do a spring change. So we'll put one and a half springs on. If that's too strong for you, then one spring is plenty. Line yourself up, lift your head up, have a look at your pelvis, pubic bone, navel and nose all in one line. Hands in the straps. Knees up into tabletop, core abdominals engaged. Breathe out to lower the arms, breathe in to return. So lat pull down series. And you want to initiate the movement from the mid back muscles. Only lower the arms down within a range that your scapula, your shoulder blades can stay flat against the carriage. So that is not all the way down to the carriage. It's often just up above and initiating the push of the straps with those mid-back muscles, the lower trapezius and the lats. Now turn the arms out, open them out, draw the arms in by your thighs, and then open to shoulder height. As the arms go out, drop the collarbones down. As the arms go in, initiate from the armpits. Try and lengthen the arms away from your shoulders, particularly through this mid-range. Armpits reach, engage. Keep the scapula externally rotating and flat. Triceps. Keep the elbows above the carriage, off the carriage, a couple of inches. And bend to 90 and then palms down towards the floor. So the challenge here is to keep the elbows nice and stable keeping the humerus, the upper arm bone, very still and stabilized, nipping the scapula back and down. So you're strengthening your stabilizers in your shoulder blades whilst working the triceps. Return the bed back to the stopper and then put your feet down. Two deep breaths. In through the nose, calm body. Out through the mouth, calm, relaxed body. Okay, ready to rock and roll again. So bring the hands up above the shoulders, engage your abdominals, lift one leg up followed by the other, and then you do a curl up. So this is hundreds prep. Reach the fingertips towards the bar, really using those armpit muscles and the lower shoulder blade muscles. Keep pulling the collarbones away from the ears. Drawing the armpits towards the direction that they're facing, which is towards the hips. Feel the abdominals pressing your hands into the strap so the abs are holding your head and your shoulders and arms up. In through the nose, out through the mouth, try and lift up a millimetre higher. In through the nose, out through the mouth, engage the pelvic floor, draw the belly button down and up. Think calm body and then return the bed back to the stopper and then place your feet down. Okay, knee rocks, legs out nice and wide, feet out nice and wide, and then rolling the knees to one side and then the other, initiating with the knees, lengthening your knees out of your sacroiliac joints. Okay, single leg stretch, lift your head up, make sure you're aligned, pubic bone, navel and nose, hands above shoulders, and then neutral pelvis, one leg up followed by the other. Lower the arms down, reach one leg out, and then the other side. Try and keep the foot on the same plane as you reach the leg out. 
Lower the arms down within a range that the scapula stay imprinted and flat. So it feels like you're externally rotating your arm bones. Ribs down, belly up. Engaging the back of the thigh, just like when you were doing plies and single leg stretch. So engaging the hamstring as you extend the leg out. Elbows stay straight, wrists are straight. Lengthening your wrists away from your shoulders. Return the bed back to the stopper, place your feet down. Put the straps down, roll onto your side. So we're going to change the springs. We're going to do feet in straps. So you might want to put on one full spring, one half spring and one quarter spring. If that's too strong, then one full and one half is plenty. Stepping one foot into the strap and then the other. Start position, neutral pelvis, heels together, toes apart and knees out the width of your ASISs. So keeping the heels together, you're going to exhale, straighten the legs like you're sliding your heels out on a tabletop, and then inhale, return. So reach out, engage your inside thighs for a moment, feel that contraction, and then maintain that as you return. So keep that inside thigh engagement as you straighten the legs and as you bend. And what you'll feel is you'll feel this lengthening of your thighs out away from the hips. Into circles, bring the legs into parallel, lift the legs up, open them out, lower them down and return. Within a range that you can keep your pelvis and lower back very still. Feel the pushing of your feet into the straps as you lift the legs up. So don't let the springs do this part for you. You want to resist. And then you'll feel the hamstrings work here, but try and keep that connection in the back of the legs. And now we're going to reverse it. So we're keeping our legs in parallel. You can do it in external rotation, but we're doing it in parallel for this workout. Lengthening out through the toe joints away from your hips, feeling the hamstrings in the back of the legs do the work. Put your hands around your waist and draw your waist in like you're doing a belt in a notch. So now into high openings. We want the, the lower back will actually be slightly imprinted here, but you want to feel like the tailbone is still sort of lengthening down and out. The hamstrings, the back of the legs, are holding the carriage still. So be sensitive to the pressure of your feet as you open and close the legs so that you can keep the carriage stabilised. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the straw, and then we hold it there for about five deep breaths. Feel the lungs expand, feel the lungs contract. Keep slightly pushing the feet into the straps, feel the rib cage lengthen up and out of your waist, and feel the rib cage draw in. And then return the, the legs back up, press the legs down. Now we're doing short spinal prep, so the feet are in a V position. You're going to draw the legs over your head as best as you can. Your pelvis is going to lift up. Now bend your knees and then roll through your spine, drawing your heels down towards your seat and then reach the legs out. Keep the legs in rotation. The pelvis will lift up. We're wanting to feel a really nice stretch in your lower back and the back of the legs. So as the legs go over, allow your pelvis to lift up by pressing your arms down, ribs down. Soften the knees in towards your shoulders. Roll and reach out. Resist with the back of the legs. Feel the sit bones tuck up to the thighs. And then as you roll down, work in the hamstrings as you lower the heels down. Just really enjoying the stretch in the back of the legs. Keep tucking the tail up. Feel the back of the legs engaged. Imprint the lower rib cage down so you get that beautiful C curve so that you open up your spine. Keep lengthening arms away from your shoulders, imprinting the arms down. And then this is another variation. So you bend your knees as deep as you can, the heels are together. And then you draw the knees towards your chest as you lift your pelvis up. 
and then lower the heels down to your seat and then reach out like frog. Bend the knees as close to your chest as you can and then use your arms to lift your bottom up. Roll and then reach. We're after feeling a stretch in your spine as you lift the tailbone up, really pressing the arms down. You might need a stronger spring here to help you lift your pelvis up, but don't be afraid to use the arms to assist with the stretch of your spine. Beautiful mobility, folding in the hips and then tailbone to head, knees to shoulder rests, and then heels down to your seat and then reaching out. Bring the legs into parallel, hold one leg in chair, put one foot on the foot bar, take the other foot out and then return the bed back to the stopper. Rolling onto your side. And now we're going to change the springs. We're going to do Ramana's split stretch. So one, one full spring. Your right foot is in line with the silver part of the foot bar. Your left foot is against the shoulder rest. So you're pressing out until you feel a stretch in the front of the hip. Engage your left butt cheek so that we send a message to the front of the hip to open up. So you do five little pulses and then you're going to straighten your right leg, exhale as best you can and then inhale, bend, exhale. Now really press the hands into the bar. That'll help you feel your core, your abdominals connect. And then pausing there and just holding the stretch, breathe into your ribs. Engage your buttocks every now and again. Have a little poke, have a little feel, making sure you're lifting up through your belly. And then bend the front knee and return. And then reach the left arm up to your ear and over your head and then over to the left. Really lift the left rib cage up and out of your left hip, rolling your armpit forward and around. Breathing stretch and length into your psoas. And then hand on the bar and return the bed back to the stopper. And then the other side. So you turn around, put your hands on the bar, right foot against the shoulder rest, left foot in line with the silver bar of the foot plate, of the foot bar rather. Pressing through the heels of the hands I find gives a really nice connection to your scapular stability muscles. Engaging your buttocks. Pressing the hands into the bar so you feel that rib to hip connection as well. It's actually quite challenging to keep your glutes, your glute max engaged here. Keep that engaged and then hamstring stretch. Now not everyone can straighten the knee, so you just do what you can. And we're after more of a hamstring stretch here, that's why I'm keeping my toe down on the floor. If you want to get more of a nerve stretch, then you flex the foot. But here we're after the belly of the muscle. Have a feel, draw the belly up. Pull your collarbones down, press your hands into the bar, feel length and stretch through your body. Return the bed back in slightly, knee above ankle, reach your right arm up towards your bicep and then over. Breathing into your right rib cage, lifting the ribs up and out. Armpit rolls forward, upper trap soft. Hand on the bar, return the bed back to the stopper. And then we're going to do a kneeling glute stretch. Oh, sorry, kneeling glute press rather. So your right foot is on the foot plate in line with your sit bone. The shin is against the bar and then you're pressing out and then returning. Breathing out to straighten, breathing in to bend. Left buttocks contracted. You want to keep that left thigh lengthening out away from the hip, opening up the front of the left hip. And then pausing there. Breathing in wide ribs. Breathing out. Return back into the stopper. So as stretch, reach up. Lifting the rib cage up and out and then over you go. Allow your head to drop down so your neck is as soft as you can. Buttocks engaged, belly in, lifting up and out of your hip. Breathing in a way that creates space in the psoas. And then draw the bed back into the stopper. 
So the start position, shin against the bar, and then push the right leg back as best you can, keeping the shin against the bar. That's your start position. Then from there, engage the buttocks. Engage your core, engage your mid-back. Keep that cylinder of support through your torso as you straighten your left leg. And then inhale, return. Maintaining that beautiful stretch and length through the right hip as we bring the left hamstring into it. And then pausing there. Breathing in a way that's creating space and stretching your body. And if you can go a little deeper, then do that. Draw the shin back into the bar. Reach your arm, your bicep up to your ear. And then over you go. Keep the left shoulder blade down away from your ear. Buttocks strong. Flare the right rib cage up and open. Like I could slide my fingers in between my ribs at the side there. They're so separated. Those rib cage bones and the intercostals are stretching out. Return the bed back into the stopper. And now into knee press round. So you sit back on your heels now, tuck your tail under, poke your bottom, feel the engagement, draw your tummy in, and then you push the knees back and then return to the stopper. So you push the knees underneath the hip sockets and then return. You're working the hamstrings and the glutes and then return keeping the glutes contracted and the scoop up through your belly. Okay, feel the lift of your belly button stretching the front of your hips, tucking the pubic bone towards your face, knees underneath the hips. And then from there, we go from knees underneath the hips back and then knees under hips. Try and go back past the hip sockets, keeping the glutes engaged and the C curve through your spine. So you only push the thighs back within a range so you can keep your pubic bone tucked towards your face. And then return to the start position. So now into elephant. So hands out the width of the shoulders. Shoulders above the bar and then shift your shoulders back. Tuck your tail under, curve your spine. Lift the toes up. Pressing back using the back of the legs and scooping up, very similar to that same sensation that you had in knee stretch, the exercise before. Pushing the thighs, pushing the carriage back using the back of the legs requires a lot of concentration. Keeping the shoulders and your arms as still as possible while you move your legs. And then here, press the bed into the stopper. Using the abdominals and your thighs to draw the bed in, 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 in. Try and pull the bed into the stopper and then release. Shoulder press. So hands out the, the width of the bar and then arms slightly angled in at a 30 degree angle. Shoulders up above your hands. C curve. And then you're pressing the arms out and returning the bed back in, trying to keep the upper shoulder blades as soft as possible, rolling the armpits down and forward towards the foot plate so we get the scapula widening apart. And then from here, you're going to do it with more of a flat back. So you lower your chest down a little bit more. The hands are still angled in slightly, 30 degrees. And the elbows are sort of reaching out and down. Now one arm, put one hand on the upper trapezius and push the carriage out and in within a range that the upper trap stays soft. The scapula will be rotating laterally and up. Now the other side. Okay, so press the armpit down and up, pushing the arm out within a range that the upper trap stays soft, using your right hand to feel that. You might not be able to fully straighten the arm, but just go within a range that you can keep the upper trapezius soft. Okay, so now into side reach. So you're sitting in a Z-sit, left shin against the shoulder rests. The carriage is away from the stopper and your arm is straight. You go all the way over and then return. So you're pressing the carriage out. The left hip does lift up. 
keeping both sides of the waist as long as possible and draw the collarbones down as best you can. So you want to externally rotate the humerus bones, dropping the collarbones down and then return. Just enjoying that lovely side reach and side stretch through your waist and your hip. So hand in line with your shoulder, the arm stays, starts straight, arm out to the side. Push the carriage out, reaching up and over, pull the collarbone down and then return. Lengthening out through the sides of the body. Feeling like your armpits wrap around and forward and up towards your face so that you can keep that scapula moving and rotating laterally. So now we're going to do pulling straps one and two. We're going to do it in a neutral position with no strap. So you're going to put the foot bar down. And you're going to lie on your stomach with your chest off the edge of the box. Ribs are on the box. Legs are out, feet are out the width of the box and you should be able to slide your fingertips underneath your belly. Pubic bone is imprinted, kneecaps are lifted, arms are forward. Pull your arms by your side, externally rotate and then return them forward. Okay, so the palms stay in towards you and you go from like a diagonal position to a horizontal position. Legs are fully engaged. You should really feel the hamstrings and the buttocks, the abdominals and the mid back here. Keeping the spine as still as possible, work those the tips of your scapula down towards your spine, particularly here, thighs, tummy strong. Initiating from the armpits. Now palms out to the side, pulling straps to neutral spine. Keep the palms facing down to the floor. And think of externally rotating the arms up. So it's almost like you're drawing your little fingers down and your thumbs up towards the ceiling. Deep abdominals and then the mid-back, and then go for that co-contraction of abs and mid-back. And imagine your hands are in the straps and you're pulling the weight of the carriage and the box. Now into triceps, elbows in by your side, straighten the arms, and then return. Press out through the big toe joints, active legs, buttocks engaged, deep abdominals strong. Once again, imagine you've got a weight around your hands there and you're pressing through a really thick consistency or pushing through that weight. And then have a little rest. Put your hands on the frame. Just let everything relax and just focus on your breath. Okay, so to come up, I like to put my hands there and swing my legs around to the side. Now, that's not for everyone, okay, but that's one way of coming up. And we're going to have a little stretch, so grab hold of the straps. Now really roll onto the back of your coccyx. Squeeze your bottom, tuck your pubic bone up towards your face and sort of hang back, feel the stretch through your spine. Arms on box. I like to do the arms on a lighter spring. I feel like I work deeper and with more precision when it's either on a half a spring or a half and a quarter spring. Some people like to do a full spring, I like to go lighter. Okay, so lat pull or chest expansion, arms are straight, wrists are straight, pull your hands in by your hip bones and then reach the arms forward. The hands are sort of sliding beside the box and we're imprinting the scapula back, trying to nip the shoulder blades flat as best you can, lifting up through the pelvic floor and your abdominals, through your palate and the crown of the head. Anywhere between six to 10 of these. Keep lifting up and out of your sit bones. Initiating by pressing the hands into the straps, using those shoulder blades and mid back muscles. Triceps, so lift your arms up and then bend your elbows 
drawing the hands in and then out, keeping the arm bone and the humerus as still as possible. So imagine your elbows are resting on a tabletop. You're drawing the little fingers in towards your collarbones and then the palms up towards the ceiling. So you keep externally rotating the arms to help engage the lats. The shoulder blades are wide, the armpits are drawing down towards the knees. And always initiating by deepening the abdominal connection and feeling like you're lifting up and out of your core, out of your pelvis. So now into rhomboids, straps just up above your elbows on your forearms, widen your elbows and then draw them back, return to wide and then forward. Elbows go out to the shoulders and then they go back past your shoulders, return and then forward. Armpits drawing back. Now use the mid back muscles. So using your shoulder blades and then draw the shoulder blades together, back out to the side and then forward, down and out and then shoulder blades kiss, return wide and then forward. Really lengthen, reach out through your elbows away from your armpits, lift up out of your sit bones. So we'll do front arms, so swing around, your pelvis is towards the back of the box, hands are through the straps, palms are up, hug a tree, draw the fingertips towards one another and then wide. Okay, armpits are drawing down and towards your knees, shoulder blades are wide. Keep the shoulder blades wide as the arms reach out to the side and keep your arms in peripheral vision. Think of initiating from the deep abdominals and then your little fingers. So now into salute, so fingertips towards the temples and then reach the arms out to a V position and then towards your temples. So it's almost like you keep your forearms as still as possible, reaching out wide and then return. The elbows are out wider than the shoulders and they stay out there as you then straighten the arms, feeling the triceps do the work. Okay, so now we're going to have a little stretch. Just put the straps down. Eagle, right elbow on top of the left and then wrap the palms around, lifting up out of your pelvis. The elbows are in line with your shoulders and then drop them down slightly. Other side, left elbow on top, wrap your arms around, elbows lifted, reaching the elbows forward and up, breathing into the back of your shoulder blades. Lower the elbows down, get a bit of a different stretch, and then release. Now we're going to do some short box work. So short box series and basic sides on the box. Put the box in a short box position. Boxes up against the shoulder rests. Put all the springs on and then put your feet through the strap. Feet are pressing wide so the strap's taut. Arms crossed over in a genie. Make sure you're in a neutral position so you can roll back and forth a few times. Now roll all the way back onto your buttocks and then C curve forward and then sit up straight. So you're rolling towards the sacrum, the arms float up parallel and then go up and over and then return. Cross the arms over. So you're imprinting the lower rib cage away from the forearms and then keep that distance as you see curve forward and then up, drawing the sit bones towards the back of the thighs and then keep that connection in your core as you go up and over and then return, feel the sit bones. Place one hand on the lower rib cage and then one hand on your lower abdominals and then hinge back, feeling the ribs connect and the lower abdominals connect. So hinging back, you push the feet into the spring bar, cross the arms over. So you go from your sit bones and then you hinge back so you're between the coccyx and your sit bones and then you return back on top of the sit bones. I like to place my hands on my core so I can feel that there's no shifting of the ribs forward or back or no tucking of the pelvis. Now put your thumbs on your hips and then your fingers on your ASISs and then you're lengthening the left rib away from the left hip and then return with length. Le lengthening the right 
rib away from the right hip. So you're lifting up and over like you're stretching the rib away and then you want to almost try and maintain that length, keeping both sit bones in contact, lengthening up through the upper spine. Imagine you're in a bus and you're sort of looking out the top window and then return. So getting the obliques engaged and stretching and contracting as you hinge. And now one hand on the rib and lower ab, rotate, hinge, return. Swap arms. So you rotate your rib away, but you keep your belly forward. And then return the rib in line with your belly button, then swap. So your rib cage rotates, the belly button stays forward, leaning back, return to the sit bones, and then ribs align with belly button, swap hands. So I find that this is a great way of feeling that rotation through the thoracic spine whilst maintaining a neutral pelvis. Now into sides. So put one leg up on the box. This is a really tough exercise. Right hand on your sit bones, engage the glute. Once again, thumbs on the ribs, fingertips on the ASIS. Reach and return to neutral. Right rib away from the right hip, return to neutral. Lengthening up and over, return. And then lift and then back out to neutral. So now this time we're lengthening the underneath side. So the left rib lifts away from the left hip and then return to neutral and then combine those two and then lift back out to neutral. Lowering down, return and then lift and lengthen out. Okay, so the lower abdominal stays still, the pelvis stays still and it's like you're pivoting around the lower ribs, around that area where your stomach is. Then the other side, flex the foot, push the foot up into the strap so you work the outside leg. And using your fingers to feel the length of your left rib away from the left hip. And now lifting up, feeling the length of your right rib away from your right hip. You're trying to keep stretching out as best you can. Lower down, return to neutral, lift, back out to neutral. Lower down, lift, and then right rib away from left. Left rib away from right, and then right rib away from left hip. Hand on the knee is also a modification if that assists you. Now have a little glute stretch, so put your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Put your right hand through the hole and then drop down. Unhunch the shoulders, keep the collarbones away from the ears and then the other leg. If this is too much of an angle for you to do, then just put the box down on the floor and then sit on the side of the reformer, like you're on a chair and you can do that. Do this stretch that way, which is such a nice stretch. Okay, so now we're gonna do beginner abduction one. So we'll put one full spring on. If that's too strong, then three quarters, so a half and a quarter is fine. Step onto the foot plate, then put the other foot against the carriage. So you might want to use a sticky mat. I like to have half my foot sort of hanging over each edge um, and then half the foot on. So find a neutral pelvis, so shifting your pelvis forward and back and then finding that neutral position. Both knees are bent and then we straighten the left leg only, so the carriage leg. Put your right hand on your right glute, put your left hand on your abdominals, scoop the belly up and feel like your right glute is sucking in towards the hip so that you can feel almost like that indent in the right back of the hip there, stabilising the hip. And then the other side, so you want to bend your knees, shift your weight, step one leg down, then the other and then turn around and then step onto the foot plate first because the carriage is a moving platform, so just for safety. Find a neutral position, sit bones in line with the heels, left hand on the glute, right hand on the belly. Keep the left leg really nice and still as you push out, initiating through the heels so we get into glute med and glute min. And those deep external rotators by pushing out through the heels, through the outside thigh, getting into those deep hip muscles, out through the mouth, in through the nose, 
and then bend your knee, shift your weight, step one leg off and then the other. And then we're doing adduction. So you want to go a little bit lighter than the abduction. Put one foot on, shift your weight, and then the other foot is actually on the carriage, this time towards the middle of the carriage. Find a neutral position, put your hands on the inside thighs, draw your heels in towards one another so your inside thighs are engaged. Pressing out and then drawing in. So either a three-quarter spring or you might want to go uh, lighter, so a half. Inhale, open. And then exhale, lengthening up. Now squeeze the bed into the stopper for four. Hands on the inside thighs. Three, two, one. Squeezing in is the challenge here. Open, feeling a stretch. Now press the carriage into the stopper. Really try and draw the legs together. Squeeze the heels in towards one another. And then opening out, drawing in, trying to touch the feet towards one another, trying to feel like your inside thighs and the sit bones are connecting into the center line. Other side, foot plate first, because it's a light spring, don't step onto the carriage, and then put your right foot on the carriage. Inhale, open, and then exhale, draw your legs together. Keep lifting up and out, pressing the hands into the thighs. Stretch, and then push the feet down and together. Now squeeze the legs together for five. Four, keep lengthening up and out, sit bones to the thighs, two, one, inhale, open, and then exhale. Now as you draw your legs together, also press the hands into your thighs so you feel like your lats are engaging as well. Shift your weight onto the foot plate and then stepping off the carriage. So how did you go? I really hope you enjoyed that workout. I'm looking forward to taking you through level two of my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date and get notified when it's released. If you did enjoy the workout, tapping the like button is always appreciated. Thanks for watching and remember, movement is medicine.